Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allah di jala syamsa wal kamar wa bihusban wa najma wa syajra ya syuran wa fadalla zamanan ala zaman kama makanan ala makan wa insanan ala insan amma ba'd Fa'udzu billahi minasy syaithanir rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim Rabbi zinni ilma sadaqallahu lazim wa sadaqa rasulahu nabiyyil karim wa nahnu ala dhalika mina shahideena wa shakireena wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen All praise is due to Almighty Allah, the nourisher, the sustainer, the cherisher, the creator of the pen, the creator of knowledge, the one who gives us guidance. And may the peace and blessings be unto the noble, the noblest of prophets, the pride of mankind, the rising star of Medina, none other than the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who was sent unto this world as rahmatul alamin, a mercy unto the entire creation. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh. My topic today is about ilm and the adab of knowledge. Uh, so, my respected friends. Do you want to be successful? Well then, you better be amongst one of those four. Who are those four? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Kaula Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Abdu aliman. He says, "Become a scholar." So the question is, what if I cannot become a scholar? Then he says, "Al mutaaliman." Become a student of knowledge, and if I cannot become a student of knowledge, or mustamian, become a person who listens carefully to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And what if I cannot listen attentive? Then he says, or muhibban, become someone who loves Allah and His Messenger. Don't fall into the fifth group. Why? Because you will be destroyed. It is necessarily upon uh, those to seek the basics of Islam, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. It comes in one hadith in Tirmidhi Sharif and the Sunan of Abu Dawood. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "He who follows a path in quest of knowledge, Allah will make the path of paradise easy for him." So, I'm going to speak about uh, a personality. Everyone knows about Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alaihi. Just his adab of how he started his quest in knowledge. So Imam Malik was a young boy, and he used to love running along pigeons. That was his thing as a young boy, pigeons. So one time at the they were having dinner, and his father used to ask his brothers, etc., like tricky questions. So he asked them a question, and he didn't know. But his older brother answered the question. So he felt bad, right? And he felt sad inside him. And his mother took him and clothed him the best they could clothe him, but nice jawban, etc. And she said, "Son, I'm going to carry you somewhere." So he now used to sing. He had a very, very, very beautiful voice. So he wanted to sing. So he told his mom, "I want to be, I want to be a singer." So the mom said, "You know what? You cannot be a singer because to become a singer, you have to have good looks as well. And son, you don't have good looks." But she's just saying this. But in reality, Imam Malik was a very beautiful person. He was very handsome indeed. So he took Imam Malik and he went to a great scholar at that time. His name was Rabia, so he carried. First, she wanted to. She never had the opportunity of seeking knowledge, so he wanted. She wanted her son to seek knowledge. So why he chose at this color? 
because he was the best at that time and he, she wanted him to learn the adab of this person. So for 12 years, well actually for 13 years he studied, he spent 11 years learning adab, respect, just by looking at the movements of these ulama. Then one day he went to Imam Zuhri, who was a great muhaddisin. So he knocked on the door, Imam Zuhri opened the door, they greeted each other, and said, come inside, I'm having dinner. So Imam Zuhri, he, he, he offered Imam Malik some food, and Imam Malik was, you know, I've come here to learn hadith. So he said, you know, look at a little boy, Okay, I'm going to give you a few hadith. He gave him some hadith to learn. And then he said, come and eat now. And he said, no, I want to learn more. He said, did you memorize those hadith already? He said, yes. He said, give them to me. And Imam Malik gave them all the hadith with its chain of narration. So when Imam Zohri saw this, he said, definitely you are the vessel of knowledge. Allah has chosen you. So, as you can see from that 13 years, 11 years of just learning the adab of knowledge. So, I'm going to give you an adab of the masjid. I want everyone to come closer. Just come up closer, because that is the adab of the masjid. I remember when I used to study in South Africa, right? I was there for two and a half years, but I can say maybe I studied for one year. That's like fake and real, so etc. right? Uh, that within that year and a half, I can tell you most of the things I learned in school was from outside of school than sitting in the classroom. In the classroom, we learn what we have to learn to pass exams. But sitting with the ulama is something different. The way they carry about themselves is the way you want to be. Because when you look at them, you see these are the people, the pious people, and these are the people who follow the sunnah of the Holy Prophet wasallam. And you try to become just like them. And I'm telling you, it's a heart-to-heart -heart knowledge. You can just sit there, don't say a word, and just listen to them and you will learn a lot. So that was the adab that they're speaking about here. We as a student, all of us are students of knowledge. We can be, become how old we are. We, we don't stop learning. And to learn, we need to have respect for the person who's teaching us. And to learn, we have to make our minds up. We have to come inside the mosque with full proper ablution. We need to do what it, the, the simple etiquettes, the basics of Islam. And that's the problem with today. In today's society, people, they rush and jump the ladder. They forget about the basics of Islam. But I'm telling you, the basics of Islam is so vast and so large that I can't even finish learning the basics of Islam. So much thing. For example, every time you make ablution, there's a dua and sunnah for each, for each body part that you make ablution. How much of us knows this dua? These are simple etiquettes to enter to the masjid with the right foot. So you see, le learning the adab and the respect and learning ill is all about learning the basics first. Once you have the basics, everything falls into place. And today with our youth, you can ask them about any singer or any football player, they can tell you about them. Because why? These are like role models to them. But if you ask them about any Sahaba or the life of the Holy Prophet Wasallam, it becomes difficult because they don't know. For example, if I ask you who is Kwaja Mohyadeen Chisti, Rahmalai, we don't know. But because of him, the whole of indo Pak are Muslims. He was from Baghdad Sharif. He was a great awliya He got a dream from the Holy Prophet to spread Islam here. 
Some narration says 8 million people, some narration says 9 million people converted into the fool of Islam because of him. Allahu Akbar. So it's a very difficult thing. You know, I'll give you the responsibility of an alim is very difficult. Eh? They leave their children, their life, everything behind just for us. And the Holy Prophet said, Al ulama warathat al anbiya, that the scholars are like the inheritance of the Prophet. Their lives are like Prophet. Yes, we do sin. But Allah can pardon us and forgive us. But they spend their whole life trying to give you knowledge. For example, an Imam, he has to wake up early in the morning and be here. I'll take for example Imam Shahaz. When I spent uh, a few nights here for Etikaf, actually I spent the whole um, Etikaf. Imam Shahaz used to be here and we used to still be sleeping. Imagine he had left his family to come here. Make sure that Salah is intact. Then go home. Then break fast with that little amount of time. It's very, very difficult. Because I know when I was growing up, my father, he used to have to spend his entire time in the masjid. I, when I was small, I wanted the same privileges, like just like any other kid. I wanted to go somewhere. I wanted to go there, I want somebody to play with me. I never had that privilege. I used to be with him 24 seven in the masjid and alhamdulillah for that. Because of that, I am now the person I am. So you can see, you need as parents, we need to send our youths to the maktab. Wherever there are small classes, you send them, let them learn something. They don't need to learn a vast amount of things, just one. Let's learn one thing. Because if you look at the life of the Sahaba, Ajma'in, they never used to learn five ayah, and they never moved forward to next another ayah, except that they will practice this and put this into their lives. That's how they used to move. But some of us, some of us, you know, cram everything into one. It can't work, ayah. It can't work. So Alhamdulillah, there are so many class, so many courses outside there. We should go and seek knowledge because that is compulsory. That is compulsory. And that knowledge is a sacred knowledge because that knowledge helps us to become a better person in this world and teaches us how to be in the hereafter. And this is the knowledge we need. And I'm not saying that you cannot become a doctor or you cannot become an engineer. Nothing is wrong with this either. Because all knowledge is from Almighty Allah. English is from Almighty Allah. So we can learn it. We're born into an English-speaking country. But Arabic is more beneficial because we get rewards with. So we learn Arabic in order to understand Quran and Tafsir. So you need to know how to balance both. You have to know how to balance both. And the best way is to send your child from a young age to learn about Islam and that way it grows within them and when they become older you will see their lifestyle is totally different they still want to go and learn because why as a young individual their hearts become attached to the masjid and that is what we want for our children because on the day of Qiyamah those other people will be under the shade one of those who will be under the shade of the, of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what we want. It's not too late to say that our youth age has went. No. We are late. We can walk, we can move around, then come into the masjid and learn and benefit. Whether you do, do a little bit of zikr or you get salah and jamaat, that is the best thing you can do. But yesterday I went to a funeral in Princess Town. Oh, this individual, he got shot. You know, and he, they buried him yesterday. But apparently he lived a, a good life and a bad life as well. And his friends was there. They, didn't, they were crying. They didn't want to leave the grave. Huh? But the type of individual they were. 
they had bottles of Hennessy. They had marijuana. And they were like, dog boy, drink this, drink this. Is that what we want when we die? Do we want that kind of life? I don't think so. We want to live a respectable life. A life in such a way that when you die, the people will rem remember you for cer certain good actions you did, and they'll make dua for you. So, it's a, it is a struggle in life, but it's a rewarding struggle. I remember when we used to study, there were times where, like holidays time, where all the students, they would go home, nah? and because we were from West Indies, and it's so far, and costly to go back, we used to stay there, right? And there were certain times we didn't have food to eat at all, because the kitchen was closed. And I remember like two or three days, nothing. No bread, no nothing. We just, you know, drank water. I saw one boy eating leaf. I don't, I don't know what that about, but that's the struggle they go through. And there are people who study ill, and they are more poor. There are people who give up every single thing just to study. And when these people, this tolerable ill, they walk, they walk upon the, the, the wings of the angel, subhanAllah. And one of the merit that we can probably do is Sadkatul Jariya. Help them. Pay for something. And it will go a long way. Because if you die tomorrow, you'll still be getting blessings and a reward. And the thing is, they're going to teach someone else, and that person is going to teach someone else, and it's going to be a chain like that. And you're going to get rewards. The struggle to study Deen is very, very, very difficult. And that's why we need to give respect to our ulama. Whether we don't like them or not, or whether you have some personal differences with them, it is your obligation to have respect for them. Just forget about it. And have respect for them. Because they lived their whole entire life just to gain that knowledge. And that knowledge to give it towards you guys. And knowledge is simple. Knowledge is taqwa. It's piety. Without it, they work hands in, hand in hand. Without it, we can't have piety. We can't fear Almighty Allah if we don't know who is Almighty Allah. So my dua to Almighty Allah is Allahumma ilma nafia that He grant us not any type of knowledge but beneficial knowledge. That knowledge that will help us. Because there yeah, there is knowledge that helps us, there yeah, are those knowledge that doesn't help us, and there yeah, are those knowledge that makes us ignorant. And ignorance is what we don't want at all. And I ask Almighty Allah, Rabbi Zinna Ilma, O our Lord, grant us all knowledge. Grant us all knowledge and keep our heart firm as believers and keep our hearts firm until the day of Qiyamah. Because for every single minute, we have to give an account to Almighty Allah. And what we're going to tell Almighty Allah that we didn't have time to learn the Quran, that we didn't have time to go to the masjid. It's poor excuse. There are more than one masjid in Trinidad. Last I checked, about six years ago, and I'm just talking about those uh, normal Asha masjids. There were 134 masjids. And now there are more masjids than that. So find yourself in a masjid. And do not go to a masjid to have any disunity with anyone. Your purpose in the masjid is to worship. Nothing else. Just worship. No business. When you come into the masjid, whoever is your enemy, he must become your friend. Because this masjid is for the hearts of the believers. When you enter here, everything worldly, you leave it behind. It's just between you and your Allah now. So Almighty Allah, forgive me for the short, com short comments I have said. And may He grant us all beneficial knowledge Taqwa, Iman, and may He make our kids uprising soldiers in Islam. And may He forgive us all. And I know the weather is very hot. The all this is Ni'mah of Almighty Allah.
through this he'll increase the rewards today inshallah wa ma alayna illa al balagh al mubin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسول أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى نسأل ربنا أن يجعلنا ممن يطيعه ويطيع رسوله ويبيع رضوانه ويجتنب سخطه أما بعض فقد فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في الكلام القديم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نضي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم وأقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتمكن عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بعدد من قعد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى عباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى على مولى وعز وجل وتم وهم وأكبر فقيم الصلاة